Hey, what are you doing? Huh? Oh, you know, just playing a new fighting game is all. I'm trying to move the character right, but it's not working. New fighting game? Oh, this is um, Evil of the Fighting Game. This is a new fighting game. You can't just press right to move right. You gotta, okay, okay. Focus with me. But you gotta press right, and then you gotta do three full circles, and then you gotta press light punch, hold up, medium down kick, there. and then you know, you gotta go like this for a second and then you gotta do this for a second. Is this math? And then all of a sudden, you don't get to do it. Oh my god. And then the character will start moving right. Man, just here, let me show you. Now, fine, show me. So, we said. Controlling a fighting game. Everyone can move around joysticks and press a couple of buttons, but not every fighting game plays the same. Sure, a lot of fundamentals are the same, but I can't say the same for something as simple as moving a character. Now, there are many types of controls for fighting games. Surprisingly, not every fighting game has the same controls. But that's a good thing as if they did, every game would pretty much be copy-pasted. Now as far as simple controls go, this is tough to define. You see, there are fighting games that literally use one button, but the type of controls I'm talking about are more for games like Street Fighter, King of Fighters, some of the Arc Fighters, etc. There are a set of inputs you would typically see in games like this. Street Fighter has three punch buttons and three kick buttons, a light, medium, and heavy for each. Depending on the version you use for the input command, you would get a light to strong input version. King of Fighters is pretty similar to Street Fighter, but this game has four buttons instead of six, a light and heavy punch and kick. Arc games are pretty good for beginners, or at least, that's what I think. My first traditional fighting game, believe it or not, was Blaze Blue Cross Tag. I got the hang of it by literally playing for a couple of minutes. Arc fighters usually have a very similar control scheme for the most part. Games like Undernight or Cross Tag or even Dragon Ball Fighters have an auto combo feature. You just press the same button a couple of times until a combo has been performed. That's what makes it beginner friendly. But games like Central Fiction or Guilty Gear are a bit more complicated. You actually have to use different buttons at the right time to do a combo. Unless, of course, you choose the simple option. Which then, it just does auto combos. But for the most part, if you are a beginner wanting to get into fighting games, the games with more simpler controls will help you get the gist of things. Platform fighters are a pretty unique genre in terms of fighting games. The most popular one being Super Smash Bros, since this is the series that started this whole subgenre. But that doesn't mean it's the only one. This genre has been tried to be mimicked a bunch of times. Some being successful, and some being... Well, it seemed like a cash grab, okay? Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, on the other hand, seems like it has a lot of potential, though. All these games tend to have something in common. It's controls. Now, don't be confused. Just because everyone has the same controls, that doesn't mean they all do the same thing. This goes for all fighting games too. So in these games you have a jump, special, light attack, and heavy attack. These commands are changed when you're in the air, at least the attacks do. For the most part, the specials don't. These games are more chaotic as you have more room to move around instead of just being within a designated variable that can only be moved when both characters move. If you don't really want to play competitively, then these games are pretty good for you, easy to get the hang of, and also pretty fun for really anyone. Here we are, the third dimension. I never thought it would look so... complicated. As far as I'm aware, there aren't many of these types of games, but the ones that do exist all play very unique, but have one thing that 2D and platformers don't have. An extra axis. That's right, now you can go forward and backwards, as well as left to right. Jumping and crouching still exist, but I found that these games are much more reliant on you standing up. Air moves are pretty underwhelming in some cases, so now you have to think on what you want to do. 
combos are very tough to execute, but when you do them, they are so very rewarding. Don't expect me to know any. Normally, these games would have moves that do combos, but also can be chained into another move for more damage. Every 3D fighter actually has different controls, trust me on this. Tekken feels more like a street fighter for this genre, while a game like Dead or Alive feels more like an art game that has auto combos. But I've noticed that both of these games allow you to execute different moves depending on where your control stick is tilted. That brings a more exciting way of thinking of how you want to deal with your opponent. However, in terms of command inputs, there aren't many of them. Sure, there are some here and there, but they aren't as key to the game as you would think. When I say command inputs, I mean something like the Hadouken or the Shiryuken inputs. That statement depends on the characters you're using. Speaking of command inputs, almost every single fighting game has one command input. You will very very rarely see them in platformer fighters, but you will always see them in 2D fighters. The Hadouken input is a pretty common one you'll see, followed by the reverse one. Dragon Punch also is a pretty common input that you would see, but the ones that I feel are pretty common yet not so popular are the charged inputs. Some characters in fighting games are literally built to camp. It's not the people's fault for playing the way they do, that's just how the character works. These characters would have you hold one direction and when you're ready to attack, you would input the opposite direction in the attack button. Again, these characters are pretty campy, so you'd have to play them defensively. An input I have trouble inputting is the full circle input. I play a majority of my fighting games with a D-pad, and yes, I play Tekken with the D-pad. But an input I never fully understood was the full circle. I can do it with the joystick, but I'm not sure if it's possible with the D-pad. There are more tough inputs as well like the pentagram input from Arcana Heart or the double button inputs that can be tough to perform with a controller in Tekken. But this part is already long, plus there's still one set of command inputs I really haven't talked about yet. The set of command inputs I just went over are mainly to do special attacks, attacks that bring more variety into the gameplay and your combos, but they are nowhere near as flashy or hard hitting to be a finisher. That's why. There are a set of inputs that some fighting games have for finishing moves, or just super specials, whichever you want to call it. These attacks also vary in fighting games. Normally, it would be accessible by using a bar or something like that, so it's not completely spammable. Once you have enough bar to perform the move, you would have to do an input that's a bit tougher than the normal inputs. Say you may have to do something like a half circle, or a double hadouken input and then press a button. Tekken does have something similar called Rage. When you're in low health, you'd have a pinch factor come in and let you do some crazy damage move that can allow for some comeback. Every character has a different range input, so the game is actually encouraging you to become better with one character than all of them. Controlling a fighting game is not always an easy job if you're new. It's not a type of game everyone will be comfortable around which is why there are some games that try to simplify these fundamentals. A lot of people would call doing a set of inputs to perform a crazy combo rewarding, both in-game and mentally. So just be wary of what you could possibly be getting into if you're ever considering trying to get into fighting games. The best thing about fighting games in my opinion is that they're never gonna play the same. From Street Fighter to Tekken, to Dead or Alive to Smash, Every fighting game will have a different set of controls. I hope you guys can appreciate things like this, because if every fighting game controlled the same, then everyone would be able to make it to EVO Grand Finals pretty easily.